The first story problem presented you with two options to visually subtract different lengths when decimals are involved. So the first example had Diego where there were four rectangles representing four tenths, so 0.4. And then what Diego had done is he took one of those tenths because it was supposed to be, I believe the initial problem was 0.4 minus 0.03. So four tenths minus three hundredths. In order to take the three hundredths away, we have Diego broke up the tenth into 10 equal pieces each representing one hundredth. And then he had crossed three of those out to be able to represent that three tenths remained and seven hundredths, which go two places over. Diego therefore correctly did this subtraction problem because what Noah had done is Noah had taken his four rectangles and crossed out three of those. That means he took out three tenths rather than three hundredths, leaving him with only, oops, sorry, a tenth of a value. And actually that zero wasn't even, even there. So if you have 40 cents and you take three cents out, you don't just have a dime left, you have 37 cents left. So Whenever we need to take a smaller value out of a bigger one, we have to break it into 10 equal pieces of the smaller denomination to then be able to subtract out of that. Now, Elena chose her own method, which was accurate, but way more involved. So she had taken each one of her tenths values and broke it up into its equivalent value as far as the lower denominations go. So this one tenth is equivalent to ten hundredths. And so instead of having four boxes of tenths, she has 40 boxes that, that are worth hundredths. So if she had four tenths and needed, needed to take out three hundredths, she could just cross out three boxes and then count how many hundredths she had left, which was 37. So 37 hundredths would be the correct example. She just did way more work than necessary. So for your remaining story problems, you could have used these visual aids to help you explain the process of borrowing and caring and all that stuff to uh, arrive at your answer. Number three was true. I gave you an explanation that was true so that you had it as a template to copy as far as being able to explain questions four through six. So this was true. And if you didn't get that, look at it again for a good explanation example to be able to follow and use for your explanations on your other questions. So as far as two and one tenth minus four tenths, one tenth is not big enough, so we have to borrow from the whole. When we borrow from the whole, one whole remains. I then take that one whole and I move it over to the tenth place and break it into ten pieces that I add to the eleven that was already there. So if I now have eleven tenths and I take four tenths away, I have seven tenths remaining. So my solution is one and seven tenths. For number five, I have three hundredths that I'm supposed to be taking six hundredths away from. I can't do that. Three is not big enough to take six out of. So I gotta go to the one and borrow from that. When I borrow the one, I replace it with a zero. So I know I can go zero point in my answer. I then take that one whole and I break it into ten tenths. That then leaves me with enough that the three can borrow from. And if I take one of those tenths away, it means I have nine tenths remaining and I add a tenth to the three. So now I have 13 hundredths. When I take six away from 13, I have seven hundredths. So 97 hundredths is my solution. Lastly, I have five hundredths that I need to take seven thousandths out of. So I have to borrow one of my hundredths, leaving me with four hundredths, and break that 
that hundredths into ten thousandths. So once I have ten thousandths, I can take seven thousandths away, which leaves me with three thousandths. So my final answer is forty-three thousandths.